Hi, I'm Chris. Hi, I'm Kevin. And congratulations on making it through this course. Now we're going to give you a little bit of a sneak peek on what you can expect for an interview that will cover some of the questions from this course. We hope this will help you know what to expect in your next interview. All right, Kevin. So um, first question for you. What interests you in a uh, career in cloud security? Chris, my, my interest in uh, cloud security is really comes down to how pervasive cloud security is in our day-to-day -day lives. Everything from streaming movies and video games pretty much runs on the cloud these days. Um, it's how technology is evolving to become more efficient and accessible um, and equitable for people around the world. With it becoming more accessible and services running on it, such as banking and uh, family photos and so forth, protecting that information is paramount. So my interest in um, security for the cloud really comes down to making sure that all that information stays protected and safe. Well, imagine you would need to explain the main differences between on-premise and cloud computing to a business leader. How would you go about it? If I was talking to a business leader and trying to describe the differences between on-premise computing and cloud computing, first, I would try to understand how much they understand about cloud computing and on-premise computing. How technical is this business leader? Have they worked in IT or have they worked you know, from more of a business perspective where they sort of learned how businesses operate? Or have they actually worked in a server room where they actually built data centers and built servers and deployed um, computer racks. And depending on where their technical foundation lay, then I would talk to them about how really the biggest differences are with cloud computing. You can save costs and share responsibilities with a cloud provider. So with on-premise computing, they need to hire specialized staff, educate that staff, help them with on-the-job training and possibly cross-training. But with cloud computing, they can rely on a third party that will offload most of those responsibilities for them and help them just run the business. Imagine a scenario right, where you're asked to implement infrastructure for a project. What are the benefits of using infrastructure as code in this type of a situation? When asked to implement infrastructure as a code, um, really just it's, it's more efficient. Um, it works in ways that are, can be automated. Um, so there are various vendors and various products that allow you to write what we call playbooks uh, in a human readable fashion. Um, think of it as um, a recipe. Right? Think of it as a recipe book. And you can sort of have this recipe book that you can pass on to people who are working in a kitchen. And they will all follow this recipe and do everything exactly as it is. This is really what helps cloud computing become efficient because if you as a client uh, start with a small business, let's say you have three employees, and you'd like to provide them something as simple as um, email service, what you might do in traditionally is maybe deploy that on their individual laptops and go in there and configure them and modify different parameters and do this for each person. And in a small business, that's it's maybe can be done pretty quickly. But your business starts to grow to 50 employees or 100 employees or 1,000 employees or big companies uh, like Google, you have 400,000 employees across the world. You can't go to each person's computer and start uh, modifying these settings and parameters. So what you do is you deploy uh, infrastructure as code and you write these playbooks where you sent, send rules to all these computers and they automatically build out and deploy everything the same way across the world. All right, well, um, how would using a cloud shell support you in your role as an entry-level cloud security analyst? A cloud shell would support my role as a um, entry-level cloud security analyst by giving me access to generally what we would define as a shell-like or terminal shell-like virtual machine interface that allows me to interact with um, the cloud environment. This could be something like an integrated development environment, an IDE, where I can run and execute code. Um, and the beauty of an IDE is it'll allow me to have things like color coding of uh, various aspects of the code. Functions will be highlighted one color. Uh, 
various variables will be highlighted in different colors. Um, and it really enables sort of this automation and ease of access and modifying of system files and um, uh, cloud um, parameters through a shell-like environment. So what is cloud firewall? What should a cloud cybersecurity analyst consider when defining firewall rules on Google Cloud? A cloud firewall is a can be an application or hardware, and it's essentially a resource that allows you to control traffic that comes in and out of a cloud environment. It can allow you to create firewall rules. You can do things like uh, filter out or block port 22 if you don't want SSH access into the cloud environment. It also allows you to sort of create rules that you can distribute um, to many different computers or many different services running on a cloud platform. Uh, earlier, we alluded to sort of infrastructure as code and the ease by which you can deploy playbooks and rules as opposed to doing them manually at each endpoint. Well, with a cloud firewall, you can automate these tasks. You can make them all in a central resource, and then you can distribute them to remote resources. Thank you. Thank you for having me. In this scenario, Kevin was able to demonstrate how to talk through his answers to show his thinking. By sharing your thought process, you're able to demonstrate what you know and how you solve problems. Problem solving is one of the main things that hiring managers are going to be looking for in an interview. Well, that's it for now. Stay tuned for some more interview tips.